you'll have a relationship in a totally different realm altogether and then you need to understand that one of the reasons there you must be able to when you say that you must take up the cross it actually means you must be detached to the world and attached to jesus are you with me there has to be a detachment from the world the things of the world and attachment to jesus because james 4:4 4, 4 says friendship with the world is enmity with god so you need to understand as when you come into a better closer relation a more personal loving relation with jesus you need to be say no to the world there may be friendships maybe you know worldly enjoyments worldly status worldly authorities worldly wealth whatever it is things of the world you must be able to say no i consider relation with jesus much more valuable when you read the word in the book of hebrews chapter 11 and the word talking about moses we find that he decided to reject the passing pleasures of sin of egypt because he knew there was something far better beyond egypt today egypt is his world but my dear brothers and sisters there is something far better everlasting beyond this world so we should not live for temporary things we should not be living and having a focus on the things of the world this is passing your life is passing the things of the world are passing but there is something which is constant and that is eternal life in christ jesus hallelujah there will be no change there will be no change at all so you know a detachment from the world and an attachment to jesus again to give up materialism today we need to understand that it is a thing so the because the word of god very clearly says in the book of john chapter 6 verse 63 that it the, the flesh profits nothing it's a spirit that gives life flesh is useless flesh will not profit you at all it is a spirit of god that gives you life and the words that you hear today now are spirit and they are life the words that jesus has spoken they are spirit and they are life the words that are in the scriptures they are spirit and they are life so what really matters what is really worthwhile is is precious is god's word is a spiritual blessings that you and i should try and appropriate again you need to understand that again when you say take up the cross and follow me it means really that you are no longer led by the flesh but by the spirit of god are you with me that's why when you read the word in the book of uh, romans chapter 8 verse 14 it says for as many as are led by the spirit of god are sons of god hallelujah again the word says it again in the book of romans it says that there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in christ jesus who walketh not according to the flesh but according to the spirit so you need to understand when you understand when you read the word there is a great demarcation between being led by the flesh being led by the spirit it is like being led by the flesh is death being led by the spirit is life so today you and i need to understand we need to respond to that call to be led to give up the flesh it cost something maybe painful maybe not very enjoyable but still you need to understand that giving up is a cross are you with me that giving up is a cross that jesus expects you to give up things that are not pleasing in his sight today your prayer and my prayer should be lord take away from my life everything that is not pleasing in your sight there may be things which you are not even aware of hello there are things which you are aware but you are not able to so you ask for the grace of god to take away from your life everything to destroy everything how will you how many of you will pray that we sing that song ashuddhi elam katti chambal aakaname enne thrilagana oru mutta aakaname do you really mean it <laughs> are you singing a nice melodious song only <laughs> we need to we need to i want to tell you something my devotion says the cardinal principle when you come and give your life to jesus is for heaven's sake stop playing religion stop playing religion it does not help you at all it will only condemn you it will only condemn you more and more so today you need to understand that if you desire you see the greatest thing you could hear from the from the from the mouth of god is as you know when you when you read the book of matthew 25 god says well done good and faithful servant you have been faithful in little things so i will entrust you with greater things enter into the joy of the lord the greatest thing that you can hear is god 
making a public proclamation this is my beloved son this is my beloved daughter in whom i am well pleased my dear brothers and sisters there is no greater what shall i say uh, approval than that that is the greatest the approval of god is the greatest approval many people give up the approval of god or don't even seek it seeking the approval of man what can man do to you nothing man can't do anything to you are you with me hallelujah as the word says no don't fear man who can who may be able to kill you but fear god who can kill you and after that throw you into hell <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah if man kills you probably you'll be a martyr and you'll go to heaven but <laughs> fear god who can if you transgress his law can kill you and also throw you into hell hallelujah so you need to understand that taking up the cross is such a important thing there is a cost of discipleship there is a cost my dear sisters i'll tell you something each of you had to sit down together not even with your husband and wife spend time with the lord to ask him lord where am i going wrong where am i making a commitment but i am not honoring the commitment where am i wanting to give my life to you where am i say singing all to jesus i surrender but i don't surrender everything my dear sisters holding back from jesus once you say all is all to jesus i surrender is nothing but what what is the name ananias and sapphira did they did it for money you are doing it for something greater than money love hello can you buy can you buy love no money can buy you a lot of things the land which they sold they could have bought it again <laughs> but love you can't you are you are you are you are actually double crossing god on a greater thing when you tell him lord i love you above all ange kaal vere onneyum snehikilla ende yeshuve ennakka paadite hello if it comes to sacrificing your time your money your effort your abilities for the glory of god and you say no i said this is enough or this is too much then i want to tell you you are actually committing the worst crime than ananas and sapphira and if the punishment for their crime was death how awful would be your punishment please take it seriously i'm telling you that my dear brothers and sisters i want to tell you again and again if you're faithful to god you will experience his benevolence so much you will experience his love so much many people shot change jesus even believers they shot change him not knowing the love of god not knowing the goodness of god are you with me if you are say hallelujah hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah each of you need we need to change i want to tell you stop playing religion stop playing part time disciples hello you get part time accountants you get part time accountants be full time disciples part time won't work would you like part time salvation no. huh? morning is like a, it's like you know when <laughs> uh, visitation rights <laughs> when people are divorced huh? children have visitation right or the parents have the visitation of the children <laughs> monday tuesday wednesday with the, with the father wednesday thursday friday saturday with the mother similarly suppose say monday tuesday wednesday you are in hell Huh? <laughs> the other days you are in heaven <laughs> would you like that stop playing religion stop traveling in two boats stop sitting on the wall that's what god said i'm telling you very clearly god said i wish you were either hot or you were cold but i hate the lukewarm i'll spit him out of my mouth you have the guts to say openly lord i don't i don't believe you you have the guts to do that he will appreciate your guts or you tell the lord lord i love you you are warm you are hot for god don't be lukewarm i'm telling you my dear brothers i don't know someone needs to hear this i'm telling you this because the way you have a relationship with god he will have the same relationship with you i'm telling you that 
don't be fooled by saying god is love god is love i'll do all this in the end i will he'll reward me and all that no he says when you read the word in the book of revelation chapter 22 he says i am coming quickly with my reward and again it says elsewhere i am coming to reward you according to your works i'm telling you my dear brothers and sisters the minute you decide to give your life to jesus fully unconditionally without recourse you will find his blessings like a tsunami in your life just test him he said no the book of malachi test me test me test me and i will pour out blessings you will not have room to store it hallelujah or you can do one thing you can have ration bole is blessing blessings in a ration baki time you starve again the book of mark chapter 6 verse 31 says jesus invites you to come apart come apart it's so important let's read the book of mark chapter 6 verse 31 he says and he said to them come aside by yourselves to a deserted place and rest away come aside by yourselves so god wants you to set yourselves apart from everything i would mean everything everybody he wants you to commune with him he wants you to commune with him have a relationship with him even jesus needed it spend time with him spend quality time with him personal prayer those precious moments that's when god will talk to you hello are you with me we are going to read the word in the book of kings you find elijah the prophet he hid himself there was a there was a earthquake god is not there there was fire god is not there there was thunder and lightning god is not there but in the still small voice god was there you need to spend time with god quality time personal prayer i'm not going to ask anybody you have personal prayer you must have we must all have personal prayer personal prayer is a time when god talks to you you read the word one word which you read 100 times suddenly that word will have a new dimension he will give you a new meaning new revelation because jesus christ is not old bread is new bread new manna every day he gave them manna according to their need hello are you with me it is not they said okay one year stock you keep <laughs> no so you need to spend we need to spend quality time with god i am preaching to myself also you will find once you cultivate a habit of spending that time you will really experience his presence and once you experience his presence you will be able to tell him lord you are more than sufficient <laughs> you are more than sufficient because he will give you he is the way the truth and the life he will give you the answer of every problem he will open the ways where it is shut where he says what i have opened no one can close what i have closed no one can open your confidence in the word revelation knowledge of jesus because again you need to understand it is it is a personal relationship with jesus is so important hallelujah again when you read the word i mean i want to just impress upon you that even the son of god needed time to spend alone with the father are you with me he was god himself how many of you believe that jesus christ <laughs> while he was here he was god yes he also needed to spend time alone with the father when you read with me in the book of luke chapter 5 verse 16 so he himself often withdrew into the wilderness wilderness and prayed alone quality time with the father drawing nourishment from the father drawing strength from the father you need to understand one thing when the woman with the issue of blood when she touched jesus jesus said i perceived the power flowing out from me are you with me in a way you could say in a way please don't now interpret it. jesus in that the thing he was please don't misunderstand he was recharging he was recharging the presence of god was filling him all over again he was you know he's strengthening him because we know we know that 
Before his public ministry, 40 days, he fasted and prayed. Then it very clearly says, then he was filled with the Holy Spirit. So there is an infilling. Again, the word says in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, and to whom who is able to do exceedingly abundantly much more than you can ask or think, according to the power that works in us. So you can get drained of the power. So you need to recharge. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, the word in the book of Luke chapter 6 verse 12 says, Now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. All night in prayer to God. Because Jesus, it was so important that he was ministering to the people, but he needed to receive from on high the power. Today you and I, whether we are ministering or not, whatever it is, whatever you know, ministry in the spiritual sense or even working, we need the supernatural ability, enablement that can come only from God. Again, when you read Mark 1 to 35, Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place and there he prayed. Morning is ideal time. You're not tired. You're rested. And sometimes if you're staying in certain places, you can worship the Lord with nature. The place where we stay, when you get up in the morning, birds are worshipping the Lord. Are you with me? Psalm says, the trees will clap their hands. Are you with me? The whole of creation will be worshipping the Lord. Morning is a fantastic time to worship the Lord. So it says very clearly, now in the morning, having risen a long time before daylight. I think you and I must try in our personal prayer to beat the sun. <laughs> no, I don't mean take a cane and beat the sun. Before the sun is up, you are on your worshiping the Lord. Are you with me? Try and do that. <laughs> You'll find the difference. Hallelujah. Long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place and there he prayed. Again, if you read with me the Mark 6, 45-46. He says, Immediately, he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he sent the multitudes away. Then see what he did. And when he had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. Are you with me, my dear brothers and sisters? Spend time with God. You will never ever regret it. Hallelujah. Because you know something? You know, it's very good to minister. Give, you know, morning one, go to, give one talk. Here, one preaching here. Afternoon here. Night there. You know, devil has a trick. Hello. He knows how to tire you out. Even you can have a spiritual burnout. You know that? So, overworking is one of the devil's tricks to take you away from the relationship. Take you away from the relationship with God. And then you will be ministering to man and not to God. Are you with me? You will be ministering three days, three times a day and all that. But you are not ministering to God at all. You are ministering to man. Like Martha was serving food to the people. That is also ministry. But you need to understand that burnout, spiritual burnout, is a devil's trick. And that burnout happens when you have no time to recharge. Are you with me? If you have no time to recharge, then you will have a spiritual burnout. So today I want to tell you, we need to minister we also need to sit before the Lord and receive from Him and give what you have received. Are you with me? Again, in the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 34, Jesus invites you to be blessed. How many of you want to be blessed? Jesus is inviting you to be blessed. Let's read that word in the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 34. It says, Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. God calls you for what? To bless you. Are you with me? So you become entitled to the blessings the way you respond to the call. 
but his calling is always to bless you to come he says come and be blessed and inherit the kingdom you need to understand that he has always prepared a place for a people who are prepared for him are you with me prepared for his he has, his place is prepared for his prepared people people who are prepared to receive him people who are prepared to receive his invitation respond to his invitation he has already prepared a place that is why jesus says in the book of john chapter 14 that i go to prepare a place for you hello if it were not so i would have told you i will come back to take you to be where i am to with me where i am so he's prepared a place for a people who are prepared for him who are preparing for his coming hello hello are you with me who are gearing up spiritually for his coming who are waiting for his coming like a anxious bride is waiting for the bridegroom so that preparation that anxiety that earnestness that zeal must be in us to receive the blessing and the greatest blessing is to be the bride of christ to have that call for the wedding thank you sister because she tak she is very spiritual i say tak she knows i was expecting lot of nobody to say but she you beat me <laughs> you need to understand everybody each one of us have an invitation to the bride of christ he is not partial it all depends on how you respond to that call and you know another thing you need to understand his touch starts the narrow second that you respond are you with me he doesn't once you respond to his call he doesn't wait to say oh is it a real respond or fake huh? duplicate respond no he knows your heart you can't do any duplicate responding the minute you respond to his call his touch on you is immediate and the classic example is the respond of the prodigal son he responded by being converted in his mind by confessing his sin he was touched immediately and i believe it was the spirit of the living god who was pushing him to his house he would have no strength even to stand up because he had not even eaten the pods that were given to the pigs that's what the word of god says such a man if he is to come i don't know how far he've traveled back to his father's house it is the spirit of the living god maybe like philip the philip the, the spirit of the living god so just transported him from the pig sty to the gate you never know anything is possible with god philip also disappeared also like that no that's how we read right he was not seen after that he was in what in a place called asustus where are those so thing is once you respond to his call his touch his life his hand his favor is upon you his grace is upon you so we need to respond to that call because god wants to what bless me say god wants to bless me amen so you need to understand that you are a heir heir to every blessing you are a priest you are a king you are a prince you are a princess you are a heir to every spiritual blessing he wants to just bless you bless you bless you but many people don't even understand understand the nature of god understand the desire of god understand the heart of god understand the mind of god and they go for religion you know they go to obey do this thing and then gets the favor of god my dear brothers i want to tell you something you don't have to do anything to receive the favor of god because the very definition of grace is unmerited favor are you with me if you are the recipient of god's grace it is mainly because you never merited it the minute you say i merited it then what you get is not grace it is wages they say wages grace and wages are totally different hallelujah so don't despise the inheritance you know something about when when you read the word in the book of uh, uh, romans chapter 9 we hear about how god hated his how how god loved that crooked deceiver jacob even before they were born because god knew from the fullness of time 
that Esau will reject his inheritance, his birthright. You and I have been born to be sons and daughters of God. But you and I can reject it out of the exercise of your own free will. God cannot push sonship on you. You have to accept it. Are you with me? So you need to understand that never, never sort of disregard, disrespect that love of God which gives you the ability to inherit spiritual blessings in your life. Hallelujah. Again, we need to understand. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is coming whether you invite him or not. Are you with me? He's coming. How many of you are sure of his coming? <laughs> Hallelujah. He will come whether you invite him or not. He will come whether you respond to his call or not. But I, one thing I want to tell you, it all depends whether you will go with him or not as his bride. That decision only you can take. Nobody else can take that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have to take the conscious decision that when he comes, I want to go with him as his bride. So prepare yourself. Each of us, we must prepare with a great amount of zeal, not knowing the time, but knowing that the surety of the event. Not knowing the time. Hmm? Hallelujah. Because you know one thing. The, the last time that the, Jesus rode on a donkey, huh? after some time, you know, he was spat upon, he was kicked, he was abused, and in the end, he was crucified. But the next time he's going to come, he is going to come as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and in all glory and honor and power and victory. You know that? And if you want to be part of that victorious King, you need better prepare yourself. You better respond and listen to his call. No religion will be able to make you worthy of that. The only thing is, if you give your life to Jesus, if you say, Lord, I want you to be my Lord, my master, my king, my shepherd and give your life, a life of obedience, living a life as a righteous man, the word says, and the righteous live by faith, faith in Jesus Christ, then you will also be part of that victorious uh, king when Jesus comes. You will be one with him.